Sometimes there's a news story that has a power that reaches beyond the material facts, even if those facts are themselves potent. Hillsborough was one, the drowned Syrian toddler another. The discernible reality alludes to a deeper truth and invites us to consider the real meaning. Grenfell is such a story. The image of a burning tower is loaded with significance, both modern and ancient. The facts, the deaths, the suffering are in themselves appalling, yet the meaning of this story, due perhaps in part to its timing, is quickly becoming revealed. First, Councillor Lauder, Chairman of the Stepney Housing Committee, will tell you something of the problem of slum clearance. The problem of the slum faces us because in the early days, rows upon rows of ugly, badly designed houses were hastily put up to provide accommodation for the ever-increasing army of workers which poured in from the country to the town. The only answer is more houses. The governments are looking to increasing the productivity in the building industry and are basing all their plans during the following five years on reaching and maintaining a level of 400,000 houses a year. But in mass-produced housing, as prefabricated housing, you may have thousands, and if there's a fault in them, there may be thousands of faults. And people didn't realize that unless you do the proper research and development, these enormous risks exist. The tenants, they were and are uh, victims of circumstances which were abominable. I spent three years in prison in conditions that were as good as some of the ones that they were put to live in. They were never, ever designed multi-story flats for families. <laughs> Hello, come here. Come here. Hello. Hello. Come, come, come. Quick, quick. Hello. Here, here, here. Come in. You gotta. Let's butter up. No, because the smoke is coming. But the people, the people outside. Yeah, let them. We can fill on them, fan. Too many people stuck upstairs. Oh my God, they're screaming. Oh are, are, are you telling me the children you witnessed and, and and they perished were were their last hope was that Superman was going to come and save them? Superman was going to come and save them. Spider-Man was going to come and climb up the wall and, 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 and rescue them. But no, they're gone. That's it. Finished. Gone. Alive. <sighs> I don't know what to say. Omar, thank you for calling in. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Um, and it really is just, it's just moving beyond words. Uh, uh, children waiting to be saved, hoping that Superman and Spider-Man save them. And of course, that didn't happen, but, but Omar, um, I hope to speak to you again. Thank you for calling. We already know that residents had organised to protest about the dangerous conditions of their homes. We know that the building was masked by a deadly facade that likely hastened the conflagration. We know that the conglomerate that owned the building had been negligent. We know that we have a government that refused to responsibly regulate housing for the poor. We know that we live at a time where poor people are being continually maligned by austerity. Austerity is not frugality. It is brutality. It is violence. Now, the pressure is on the designer, the architect, to provide the building that the client wants within the money that is available. Now, if he's going to try and do that, he wants to build it as cheaply as he can within the shortest possible time. So he's under pressure to innovate to try and achieve this. And 
the more you innovate without development, the greater are the risks. This fire at this time is a grim omen indeed. We know that firefighters have long been saying that they're not adequately funded to do their job. We know that public services are being deliberately eroded and we are beginning to understand that for many years power and wealth has been seditiously siphoned upwards. Grenfell has portent beyond even the unthinkable suffering of its victims. It was a pyre of ordinary people whose voices and needs had been ignored whose cause had been maligned, the flames of the fire fanned by the constant damnation of this government and its media partners. If it proves true that the edifice applied to conceal the decay of the building and improve the vista of newly erected luxury apartments exacerbated the fire, then we can succinctly decode the meaning of this awful event. The Grenfell residents were sacrificed for greed and comfort. What do you think they were designed for? Making money, and they made money in abundance. It was the best time that the contracting industries ever had. This burning tower and the screams of its residents are a call for urgent change. When I first saw the image, like a well-trained citizen, I thought, terrorists. And of course, in a way, it was. Surely, for the occupants, it felt like terror, like a horrific assault that they could do nothing about in spite of trying to prevent it. I don't imagine that as they were immolated, they thought, well, at least this fire was caused by corrupt landlords and complicit governments. These terrorists can only be beaten by defiance, disobedience and solidarity, by direct involvement in politics and by supporting progressive leaders that want real change and are willing to confront the powerful. Perhaps then this tragedy may have a meaning beyond corruption and neglect. It could be a chance to tear down the facade and face up to the reality we are living in. They were never designed to throw hundreds of people together, close in proximity, block to block, without open space. They were not designed for those purposes, and the fact that they were used for them is responsible for so much human misery that I thank the Lord that I had nothing to do with any of that kind of system building. I want somebody to pinch me so that I can just wake up because I feel like I'm in a dream. It comes like it's Groundhog, Groundhog Day. It doesn't feel real to you? No, it doesn't. I need to sleep, but I'm now afraid. I'll be honest, at the moment I'm running on anger and adrenaline, yeah? I've, I've, had, I've, I've had an awful 72 hours around here. If someone had told me four days ago that I'd be standing here giving interviews about people dying in the block next to me because of council incompetence, I probably wouldn't have believed it. But hey, here we go. There's all sorts, there's elderly, there's children, there's disabled people, it's all sorts, of, there's luggages in the stairwell. You know, yeah. even some of the stairwell and some lights were not working. So it was so dark in there. She's out, but her brother and the wife and children still there. We don't know if they're safe or not. And I, and I said to her, they're coming. They're coming for you. They're coming to get you. Uh, um, I, I don't know if they did. It was very fast, very quick. I cannot imagine that so fast. Every minute, it was getting worse and worse. It was like going around the building fully, like as, as, as a circle. We are uh, ensuring that within three weeks, people will be rehoused so they have a home to go to. I'll so immediate support. Do you support. accept though that you misread the public mood, the level of anger? You didn't go and meet residents and they really resented that. This was a terrible tragedy that took place. It is a, this is a crime against humanity what they've done. People's children are still charred bodies inside a building that people can't get into. 
Those people children, need to go to their jail. Babies, they should their be mothers, arrested. Their fathers. Just like every other citizen. If we go out there and run somebody over and it's a mistake, we get arrested for suspicion of manslaughter. Uh, I don't think I don't think there should be key demands of the community at the moment because I think it should more be about the key demands of the police for interviews with people who are involved in this, like Robert Black, the chief executive of Kensington, uh, Kensington and Chelsea TMO. You know, like the chief executive of Kensington and Chelsea Council, like Councillor Paget Brown. You know, like the people at um, Bryden, like the people at Studio E. You know, I think those are the people who should really be questioned at the moment. And I think they should be questioned under caution. You think of all the great changes that have happened in life, in, in, in the world, everywhere. They've very seldom come from people um, in power. They've come from pressure on people in power. In this quest for justice, we have to remember the words of the great emancipator, Frederick Douglass, when he says, power concedes nothing without demand. So we ain't asking this government for nothing. We ain't asking this council for nothing. We're demanding certain things in this government. Where do you think you are? So this is some rat back tin pack community that you can just walk over. This is Labra Grove! This is Labra Grove! That's right! That is right! You say not in here, not in here for them! Yeah! It's a Labra Grove! That's right! For too long they've been saying not in here! And we know where we're there! It's our home! It's our community! And they want to keep us divided! Look around you! They want to paint some picture of immigrants! Right. Asylum seekers, right. Right. refugees, right. terrorists. Right. This is Labra Grove. Right. We are black, white, rich, poor, brown, white, Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Jew. This is in one of the richest boroughs, Kensington in one of the richest cities in the world. London has more billionaires in it than New York. If we are not ashamed today that we failed our most vulnerable, those earning the least among us, the economically least empowered, if we are not ashamed that in the richest city of the world and in one of the richest boroughs of this richest city that we failed all of those victims and their children who are still missing or who have perished if we are not ashamed then I don't know what's happened to our humanity because this tragedy in 2017 should have been impossible kind of thing we Londoners have saved and scraped for. A house in the suburbs, a home of our own, a place where the wife can be mistress in her own house, a place where the kids can run about in safety, a quiet, peaceful place where a man can rest and forget his worries.